boys and girls, my name is Mike Moans and I'm here on behalf of UK Gaming Network to talk to you about Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise was released at the end of March and that's given me about 30 days to play through the game. I've completed the main story, I'm into the post game and currently working my way through the side quests. So the question is, how good is Monster Hunter Rise and how does it follow on from the main console release? Monster Hunter games are known for their difficulty with every single fight being a boss fight. With many of their previous games, there is no tutorial. You go straight in after a tiny bit of weapon training. This means a novice hunter will be set free into the world with a giant monster trying to break their kneecaps. You get very little in the way of being told how to use traps, being told to prepare for your hunt, or generally much about the world. It's like leaving college and knowing how to do Pythagoras, but not knowing how to wire a three-pin plug. Monster Hunter Rise gives you a beneficial tutorial, walking you through some simple village quests. Village quests have about 30% of the difficulty of the average hunt in the game. This gives you a massive chance to learn the mechanics, hunt monsters much easier, and farm some basic resources that will help you later on in the game. For new and returning players, I recommend you spend this time wisely, getting used to the wirebug mechanics, exploring the area, and really pushing those three-dimensional movements. With this Monster Hunter game, you have more freedom in movement than ever before. You can wall run, you can climb, you can swing like Spider-Man, before gracefully flying down and braining whichever monster happens to be in your path. Kamoro Village has been blessed with all the charms of a Monster Hunter game. You get wonderful cutscenes of your food being prepared, Palico adventures, and one hell of an immersive soundtrack. New to Monster Hunter Rise, you also have the new Endemic Life. Endemic Life are useful little hunting helpers that are around the map that give you little buffs and benefits during your hunts. This is added incentive to travel around the map finding all the hidden secrets, including the unlockable collectibles and hunter power-ups. The world design of Monster Hunter Rise is incredibly stylized, which helps the performance on the Switch. That said, this comes at no expense to the graphics quality or monster designs. All the monsters have a very unique characterization, they move in their own unique ways, and their designs are truly something special. Monster Hunter Rise boasts a gallery of over 65 monsters for you to hunt. Not all of these are large monsters, some will be endemic life, some will be little creatures that you could easily bonk on the head with a hammer, smushing them into a fine paste, and others will be elder dragons, which are more boss tier enemy, even by Monster Hunter standards. Many monsters featured in this game are brand new and exclusive to Monster Hunter Rise, but many are returning from past favourites such as Monster Hunter World or Generations 4. There is genuinely a lot of returning monsters that will please the old fans with new ones exciting their hunt just that little bit more. One of the most unique additions to Monster Hunter Rise is the Rampage mission. Rampage missions are a tower defence style game featuring monsters you have hunted previously, but you get a team of hunters and some battle mechanics such as cannons, ballistas and dragonator which will impale monsters on a giant rotisserie spike primed for grilling. Many of these new Rampage quests do involve the new Apex creatures. Apex creatures are the biggest and strongest of each of the species that have a slight variation in their behaviour or their attack pattern. For those returning to the franchise from past Monster Hunter games, you may know these as variant creatures. To succeed at Rampage Quests, you need to set your battlements ready to repel all of the monsters, and I highly suggest you do this with a party of friends. For those familiar with Monster Hunter World, multiplayer was a bit of a nightmare during the main campaign. You used to have to post the quest, join the quest, go and enjoy a cutscene, pull out of the quest, rejoin the quest with friends who'd also seen the cutscene. This slowed your gameplay down to a crawl when playing with friends. In Monster Hunter Rise, all you need to do is join at the Gathering Hub, post the quest to the board, join the quest, off you go. No more compulsory cutscenes, and any cutscenes you do have are skippable and watchable by the whole party. When talking about the benefits of Monster Hunter Rise over Monster Hunter World, the main thing is quality of life. There are so many small features that have been tweaked and improved to make it much easier for new players as well as returning players. For example, when you find ore at a mining outcrop, hitting the button once will have your hunter farm all the ore in a single stroke so you can move on quickly. In World, you have to stand there for about 8 seconds individually mining individual pieces of ore. Because that's what you want in a Monster Hunter game, to stand there repeatedly mashing a single button to harvest a little tiny weeny crystal. No! Bring me a monster I can hit with this giant teddy bear on a stick passing as a hammer. Saying that, the Monster Hunter weapon designs in World were absolutely fantastic but focused more on realism and practicality than the fun of the fantasy realm. In Monster Hunter Rise, we've gone back to the old ways with high fantasy weapons, silly designs, adding flair to each and every hunter. Forging weapons and armour have also had quality of life improvements. The amount of materials required for each set of weapon or armour is a lot less than Monster Hunter World. Now you could be out there enjoying the game rather than focusing on the monotonous grind of trying to get that one extra dragon scale to make your fancy sparkling pants that make the boys go wild. To all those who've played Monster Hunter before, this game may be too easy. 
I found many a times as somebody who's only played two past Monster Hunter games that the hunts are not challenging me, they're not pushing me, and I'm often doing them without fainting. When you don't worry about fainting to creatures like Rajang or even the endgame boss, there is a slight problem in your difficulty curve. While very compelling to new players, Monster Hunter has been a franchise that has appealed to its veterans for many years, pushing them higher and higher into difficulty. Now, I must say at this point that the game is not finished yet. Now, I'm not saying it's very much like Cyberpunk, where they released half a game. I'm saying this is more episodic structured. We have already had announcements that at the end of April we are getting Apex Rathalos joining our Rampage Hunt, and the addition of Camellios, another Elder Dragon. Now, without going into spoilers again, the end game is not truly the end game. There is very much a to-be-continued vibe, and that content is due to drop in May. So for anybody who finishes the main game, what do you do after it? Past Monster Hunter games have increased the difficulty with G-Rank or Master Rank. We've had expansions like Iceborne pushing hunters into harder and harder hunts, ending with Alatrion and Fatalis, who have always been known as Monster Hunter's hardest creatures. While addressed already with downloadable content for free for all of its players in April, the endgame currently is a major letdown. All you can do is go back and fill out all the quests you've missed, the side quests, which many of them don't unlock anything new. Currently I'm in a stalemate with the game. I'm strong enough to tackle even the endgame boss with ease, and no creatures currently provide me a real challenge. All I can do at the moment is farm monster parts to recycle in the new melding mechanics. In Monster Hunter World, you would earn yourself gems or decorations for completing hunts. Each one would add additional skills to your armor set. In this game, there is no such RNG. By recycling monster parts at the Armorsmith, you craft your very own gems, avoiding the need for RNG. Talismans have replaced the need for charms. In Monster Hunter World, a charm would be a few defined skills bound to a necklace that you could wear and upgrade as you progress through the game. Whereas in Rise, the post-game content and the RNG is bound to these talismans. By converting monster parts, you can create these talismans, which have a randomly assigned set of skills together. Post-game currently is just farming as many monster parts as you can to convert into talismans in the hope you get that perfect one. Now, unfortunately, due to the currency of the game and different values, different values applied to each monster part, it is very easy just to farm the one creature over and over again with the highest valued parts and handing them in just in the hope of getting that perfect necklace. Again, other than finishing your side quests and any requests you have from villagers, this is all there is in the end game and it desperately needs to be pushed further. Right now, this is my biggest complaint about the game. The game is too easy and the end game is non-existent. We are now counting down days till the next new content to give us a true ending into our beloved game. Now credit to the Monster Hunter team and Capcom, they have planned content for over a year which will be free for everyone who bought the game. Right now there is nothing I need to do in the game except farm these talismans. However, even without the talismans and a lot of skill slots not being used on my armour, I am still considerably stronger than the creatures I'm fighting. This is a huge problem for the game and it really needs to be addressed, but I have the utmost faith that with the new updates we will get better endgame. During the development of Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter World was also in production, and certainly that Iceborne DLC. Now, there is a lot of harmonising between Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter World, but I do believe Rise is the more polished version of World. All the quality of life improvements, the graphics, the wire bug mechanics and the turf wars have all been implemented to perfection in Rise, making it a fantastic successor to the other handheld games such as Monster Hunter Generation. Currently this game is sat at an 8 on the UKGN scale and to push that to 9 or even 10, all we need is the content updates promised to deliver us a true endgame. Up the difficulty, give us more to do and develop a longer story that gives us a satisfying ending. So for now that's all I can say about Monster Hunter Rise. I do implore you all to get a copy of the game and enjoy it as much as I do. I will revisit this review in about a year's time just to see how the new content updates have improved it and see if it can truly reach its Monster Hunter potential. Thank you all, I've been Mike Moans from UKGN and I wish you all some happy hunting.